Greetings, new friends. During the time between Teresa's death and her memorial service, October 2019, I went on a retreat to a hypnotic coaching training with my friend and teacher, John Overturf. This work helped me to let things be, let, let things move. sense what was there and express it and that resulted in a series of posts that I did as this process was occurring. It's October 11th, 2019. I find this sweet screen grab. I surreptitiously grabbed as Teresa was waiting when we would Skype, we would take turns being the one to end the call. Who's got the finger, we would say. On this occasion, I had the finger to push the red button and cut off for the night. She's waiting for the disconnect. October 12th, 2019. I find a photo of the last sunset of our last vacation to New Hampshire. After Teresa died, I felt I was invading her privacy when I emptied her purse. But it turns out I was in there all this time. I'm still in there. She's in here. The photo is by Kathy Morris. The Aging Effects by Teresa Rowland. It's October 14th, 2019. I find this this crazy photo. Of course, everyone knows Teresa was a fashion plate. <laughs> As one of Teresa's students put it, she doesn't miss a thing. She'd be teaching a workshop with 30 people and catch an unlifted arch at 20 paces. So why did she let me walk around all day with my pant leg tucked into my sock? Lorraine Ash comments, there's only one explanation for this. She liked your pant leg tucked into your sock. <laughs> I used to call Teresa Prima which means divine love. I first learned that word from the mantra Aham Prema, which translates roughly, I am love. I remember asking if it would be okay for me to call her that. She thought about it and said, I would not object. So that is how that happened. Now that she's gone, it feels to me that Teresa is gone. Prema is not gone. Prema was always everywhere. In describing my relationship with Teresa, I would often say, I'm the driver. But really, she's the driver. She worked for yoga and for the studio literally through the week before leaving us on September 10th, 2019. 
Her reward was the community of yoga extended around the world. I was the driver on September 9th, 2019. We were running a little late to make what would be our last doctor's appointment. Doing about 80 miles an hour on Route 78, I look over to check on Prema. One hand on the wheel and one eye on the road, I snapped this one last photo of Teresa Rowland. I offer it to the universe as part of this incredible, ineffable process we are all experiencing. When Teresa was alive, she knew she was alive. Taking in the world. Teresa was always up to something. I could see it in her eyes. And when she was involved in a project, she had a compelling energy not to be interrupted. But she would interrupt herself to be polite and say in her comic way, I am busy. And then she would go back. It is important for me to share that there was the same energy when she was, I will say, practicing dying. At one point close to the end, Prema came to herself. She opened her eyes and rolled them in a kind of where am I way. I was holding her hand. It had been limp. She turned and we clasped eyes. She gave me a quick squeeze of my hand. And then she went back inside. Without speaking, she said, I'm busy. A few moments later, she simply breathed out and not in. It was a kind of peaceful shock I don't think can be described. Teresa and I would go for walks at a local park. We would take the lake trail. And there is this one spot, a hill overlooking a little cove with water lilies. Often I'd turn around on the trail looking for Prima. She would be standing back there, taking it in as we've seen her do. I put Teresa's ashes in the water here today. That's her spot now. I always stop there for another silent conversation. It's October 28th, 2019. I just got back home again after Teresa's memorial service when I took this picture. You know, for flying frogs, these guys don't like to travel. They were so used to flying around Teresa's kitchen. I was the guy who batted them, putting on my coat. Those wings are epoxied on now. I found another scarf and draped it across the big horns. Seems so right. Teresa put the Maharani chai label across the forehead. If you have one of her scarves, I would love to see a photo. In 2017, Teresa and I visited Cora Wen out in the Hamptons. We had a wonderful time, especially as we discovered yet another way we were in tune. Here are 23 precious seconds recorded by Cora. Thank you, Cora.
I'm looking at this photo of Teresa with the flower in front of her face and she's smiling out from underneath her quirky hat and it reminds me that even though she had cancer from our beginning to our end moments like this she let that go she was very good at not compartmentalizing but creating space she would go to her chemo she would get the surgery she would, she would do whatever they said and in between she really didn't engage in that at all she was all about gardening or whatever was happening the other stuff simply did not require her attendance until they did there's something there that's inspiring Thanks for coming along. Thanks for listening to these posts that I made in autumn of 2019. It's been very helpful for me to review, reflect, and share these. And I hope it's been helpful for you. That's all for now. We'll see you a little further on down the trail.